Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time on this channel we talked about different theories of motivation and today we're going to expand on our conversation with Unit 7 Topic 2, Specific Topics and Motivation. We are motivated by a variety of different factors. We can see the power of external rewards in motivating an individual to perform different tasks and how intrinsic motivation can help keep an individual actively engaged with the project for a longer period of time. But one could argue that our physiological needs are the ones that provide the strongest motivation. When we are hungry, thirsty, or tired, our bodies are no longer in homeostasis, and we focus on trying to fix these physiological needs. Oftentimes, it feels like nothing else in the world matters until we're able to return our bodies to homeostasis. When looking at our hunger and our motivation to eat, we can see a cycle start to form. When we eat food, our body creates more glucose, which raises our blood sugar levels. Due to this, our pancreas produces more insulin. This then lowers our blood sugar levels, which reduces our hunger. Eventually, though our glucose levels get too low and our hunger increases again so we eat more and our glucose levels rise and our cycle repeats. Our hunger and appetite also stem back to the brain with the arcuate nucleus which is part of the hypothalamus. Here we have the lateral hypothalamus which when stimulated helps produce an appetite stimulating hormone. This is what gives us an increased interest in eating. If this part of the brain is ever damaged we'll lose interest in eating even if we're starving. There are also appetite suppressing hormones which are produced with the help of the the ventral medial hypothalamus, which tells us when we are satisfied and gets us to stop eating. If this part of the brain is ever damaged, we'll continue to keep eating, even when we're full. If we approach this topic from the biopsychosocial approach, we can see that our hunger comes from our biology, but we can also see that what we eat may depend on our socio-cultural situation or our current psychological state. For example, if we look at your mood, oftentimes we can see that when people are feeling down or stressed, they eat foods with lots of calories. Foods that have carbohydrates boost the neurotransmitter known as serotonin, which helps calm the body. This would be an example of our psychological state and how it impacts our hunger. Depending on who you are and who you're with, you may also eat different portions of food and different types of food. This is an example of the power of different social cultural forces that act upon us. One other physiological motivator is sex. Now, this is not something you actually need to survive, but it's a biological drive. In life, we can see that certain sex hormones drive sexual motivation. Testosterone for men and estrogen for females. These hormones start impacting us early on with the development of our bodies, and eventually during puberty, these hormones start to impact our behaviors and thoughts. Again, we can look at sexual motivation through the biopsychosocial approach. Biological influence on our sexual motivation comes from our hormones that impact our thoughts and behavior. Psychological influences are different things that may promote sexual motivation, such as music or imagery. Lastly, there are social cultural influences, which can be our religion, different influences from our friends or family, the media, and societal values that are promoted around us. Now, besides sex and hunger, I want to highlight two other ways we are motivated, which connect with different challenges and social situations we experience in life. The first is affiliation motivation, which is our drive to want to belong and be with others. This motivation pushes us to want to establish relationships and be connected with groups around us. Lastly, there is also achievement motivation, which is our drive and desire desire to excel at what we do. This motivates us to overcome different challenges and continue to better ourselves. This allows us to achieve mastery in a particular skill or bring an idea to life. And there you go, another topic review video down. Now you know the drill, it's time to hit that subscribe button if you found value in this video and to answer the review questions on the screen. And of course, check your answers down in the comment section below. As always, make sure you check out my ultimate review packet for more help with everything AP Psychology related. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.